the Wolf. Peter and the Wolf is a very special story because it is told with the help of music. A different instrument is used for each character in the story. If you listen carefully, the music can tell you what the character is doing and feeling. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into the big green meadow. A little bird, who was Peter's friend, was in the tree near the garden wall. All is quiet, the bird chirped gaily. snapped. What kind of bird are you if you can't swim? Then, with a shake of its feathery tail, the duck dived into the pond. Back and forth, and back and forth, the duck and the bird argued. The duck swam in the pond while the bird hopped along the bank. They were so busy arguing, they did not notice the cat sneaking through the grass on its velvet paws. The cat crept closer and closer to the bird until, look out, shouted Peter, who was watching nearby. With a flutter of wings, the bird flew up to the top of the tree. The cat thought to itself, it isn't worth it to climb up that tree. By the time I do, the bird will have flown away. Just then, Peter's grandfather came out into the meadow. Peter, grandfather called, I have told you many times not to wander into the meadow. I know it's beautiful, but it's also very dangerous. What if a wolf should come out of the forest? What would you do then? I am not afraid of any wolf, Peter said bravely. But it was no use. Grandfather took Peter by the hand, led him home, and locked the garden gate behind him. Just as Peter left the meadow, a thin gray wolf did come out of the forest. In a twinkling, the cat sprang up into the tree, and the bird twittered and fussed. The duck saw the wolf too. The duck was so excited and bothered that it quacked its way right out of the pond. No matter how hard the duck tried, it just couldn't get away from the hungry wolf. All at once, with one big gulp, the wolf swallowed the plump little duck. But the wolf was still hungry. Round and round the bottom of the tree he paced, never taking his eyes off the frightened cat and the bird. Peter was watching everything from behind the garden gate. He was not the least bit afraid. Quickly he found a strong rope. He climbed onto the garden wall and up into the tree. Peter whispered to the bird, fly 
right down and circle around the wolf's head. Keep him busy so he won't notice me, but be very, very careful. The brave little bird flew around and around the wolf's head. The wolf snapped at the bird, first this way, then that way, but the bird was too quick and the wolf could not catch it. Meanwhile, Peter tied one end of the rope to the tree and made a loop at the other end. Carefully, carefully, he lowered the loop down until it was around the wolf's tail, and quickly he pulled it tight. The more the wolf twisted and turned, the tighter the loop held his tail. Oh, how the wolf growled and snapped. He fought wildly to get free. Just then, horns rang out of the forest, and soon three hunters on horseback appeared. They had been chasing the wolf. Oh-ho! laughed Peter. There's no need to hurry. I've already caught the wolf. Come, let's take him to the zoo. Well, you can imagine that triumphant parade. First came Peter, who was rather proud of himself. Then came the hunters, leading the wolf. Then came the cat, who was careful not to get too close to the wolf. Then came Grandfather. And if you listened very carefully, you could hear the duck quacking away inside the wolf. The wolf, in his hurry, had swallowed the duck whole, so the duck was still alive. Above them all flew the little bird who chirped merrily. Look at us! What a brave pair we are, Peter and I. We have caught the wolf. So, Grandfather and Peter and his friends all lived happily ever after.